In most cases, our regions in three-dimensional space that we're trying to integrate over will not actually be rectangular prisms. Usually they're going to be more complicated regions. So in this case, remember our B, this is our box. B represents a box or a rectangular prism. And so our rectangular prism regions are just literally small boxes, or maybe big boxes in space, but these that we can chop up into small boxes in a very systematic way and write a Riemann sum for, and in a nice iterated integral. But a more general region is going to be bounded between at least two surfaces in our three-dimensional space. And so general regions might, and I'll just draw some pictures here, but a general region might be bounded above by some surface. Let's call this surface 1. And maybe it's bounded below by another surface. So maybe there's another surface here for which we've got this kind of a picture going on. And so it doesn't have to be a super nice connection here. But the idea here is that our region, this time we'll call our, our general regions, we will call E. Our general region in the picture I've drawn right here is supposed to be, it's hard to see, but it's supposed to be bounded between, between this lower surface, uh, S2. So the way I've named this, it's going from S2 up to, bounded above by S1. Okay, so our region E in this scenario is bounded between our surface S2 and S1. That's all the points that are above S2 but below S1 and inside of the, both of them. Okay. <clears throat> so let's say that these surfaces not only are surfaces but that they are given by the graphs of some functions. So let's say that S1, and by the way, they both sit in three-dimensional space. So in three-dimensional space, they sit above some region. So if we project it down, they sit above some kind of cylindrical region that lives in the plane down below. So this plane down here we'll call this region in the plane is D and both of these surfaces, the green and the blue, are given by functions that are defined on this magenta region. So in particular this green, this green region, this is given by the graph of some function F2. So it's the graph of F2 over D. And the same thing for the blue one. The blue graph is given by, the, or the blue surface is given by the graph of function f1 over this region d. Okay, and so what we want to do now is write down a triple integral. So we've got some other function f that we're trying to integrate that's defined on this region. And so the triple integral over e of this function, f of unknown function at this point, f of xy d, dv, this is going to be, we can do a kind of iterated integral here where the boundaries of the inner, the inner um, integral, the innermost integral, the boundaries are these functions, the, the, the graphs of these functions. So the innermost integral is going to go from the function f2. Okay, so by the way, these, when I say these are functions, I mean that the function, that this is z equals f2 of xy. This function is defined in the domain D down below, okay, and it's graphing up to the green surface, and then the upper bound is Z equals F1 of XY. That's the blue surface up above, so we go from the green surface up to the blue surface, and then, so here we integrate then our function F of XY, Z, DZ. Notice that in the boundaries, if we have formulas for these functions, we'll have examples in the videos that follow this one, but the boundaries will, will be equations that do not involve z. So after computing this integral, all the z's will be integrated out and we'll only have x's and y's remaining. And at that point, after we've integrated that, that z direction integral, this entire three-dimensional region will collapse in some sense, the integral collapses it, to a function on this domain D in the plane. And so what this is reduced to then is a double integral over the region D in the plane with respect to area. So double integral D uh, over D, dA, and the 
function that's being integrated over is this inner integral itself after it's been computed. So this is a version of an iterated integral that does a single integral inside first. So the z direction first, the way I've drawn this, and then a double integral after that um, to compute the rest of the integral in the plane. Now it's possible that our solid regions are bounded not in the z direction by two surfaces, but in a different direction by these two surfaces. So if we've got our x, y, z coordinate plane here, the picture I drew for the first kind of thought example was a region that was bounded in the z direction, vertically in the z direction by two surfaces. But of course it is possible that maybe our surfaces are, uh, our surfaces are in a different direction. So I'm trying to draw a kind of crazy surface here. Maybe this is a bad idea. But maybe we've got one surface here and then another surface. So another surface going this way. And so the idea here is now that we've got two surfaces and the region should be kind of the intersection of these two. So in between these two things. So the way I've drawn this, we've got a region. I'll just simplify. A region bounding this side and then some other surface on this side. And so this is the idea. And on this side, we've got, say again, surface one. And on this side, surface two. And in between, we're gonna to wanna to integrate this one the way I've drawn this in the y direction first. So. We're going to integrate this way. And in doing so, that means the domain of these two functions, if we think of these as functions, the domain of these two functions is going to be projected after integrating in the z direction. We're going to project the domain of these two onto our xz axis. And so this will be the domain d over here. We've got functions then that define our f1 in this case will be this f1 will now be y equals f1 of x and z as the lower bound. And our f2 will be y equals f2 of x and z. And then they're both defined over this region d. And so the triple integral over the region e, remember e is, the, is what we use to define this entire solid region here floating around in space. And the triple integral, volume integral, over this region E of some function, again, any function, f of x, y, z, 3 defined on this region E, dv. This time, the inner integral is going to be in the y direction, the way that I've drawn this picture, right? So the inner integral is going to be with respect to y. And it's going to be bounded between our two functions. So our upper function is y equals f2. Our lower function is y equals f1, so the two surfaces. And then, after that's been integrated out, now we've got a two-dimensional integral over this region D. The region D is an area integral, but it's with respect to the variables X and Z, as you can tell by this picture. Okay, and so our general regions, we're always going to try to bound between some surfaces. Um, if, when it's possible, it, the surfaces don't have to be always in the Z direction. So our first example, again, the surfaces were vertical in the z direction. The second example, they're in the y direction. And I'll let you guys try to sketch a picture of the uh, surfaces bounded in the, z, in, the, sorry, in the x direction first so that the projected domain is in the yz plane.